Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Sailing Melody. If you haven't seen last week's episode you can go back and have a watch of course but here's a quick recap. We had Melody lifted in the travel lift so that we could tackle the keel box where our lifting keel normally lives and it was devastating news. We discovered that it's so badly rusted that it's not going to be practical to patch it up and it's impossible to cut it out without removing basically the entire interior, all the floor and all the ballast. So we were starting to despair until our resident expert welder Nigel came to the rescue with a brilliant and very strong solution which will be implemented over the next few weeks, weather and Nigel's availability permitting of course. So this week we're preparing for that work by having the underside of the keel and inside the keel box all blasted and painted. So Jack and I are at the boat and they're about to start blasting the inside of the keel box yep. and around the um, and the keel base plate. Pla bleh, can't get my words out this morning. Base plate. Base plate. <laughs> um, so we're gonna we'll try and film a little bit, but we're gonna go out while they're doing that. Um, but we think we've blocked up all the bits where sand can get into the boat. So fingers crossed we don't come back to carnage. So he's just under the boat at the moment, shot blasting. I can't really get any footage because it's in an awkward place. So I'm just getting ready to paint um, the underside of the keel and inside the keel box. Um, I'm not painting where it needs welding, but I'll be painting everything else. Um, a little lesson of the day is to always tie your ladder on, which we normally do. But yesterday we were up in the strap, so the ladder came off. And then when Jack and I got back in, I put the ladder on and I didn't tie it back on. Now I'm desperately trying to get somebody's attention because look, have a look at this. There is my ladder. And the lads in the yard are in the sea with the crane. So I'm stuck. <laughs> and as you might be able to tell, it's, oh, it's flipping windy out there today. It's sunny, so at least it's drying all, all the wet blasting, um, all the wet ground from where they blasted yesterday on the floor. Um, but yeah, it's really windy, so it's going to be fun with the paint. I need some rope. Why do you need some rope? You have a plan, do you? Don't lean over. I'll be amazed if this works, Jack. Pardon? I'll be amazed if this works. Let me stand back. Might go back in the cockpit then. Hold on. Whoa, Jack, I'm going to make an engineer out of you. And that's why boat kids are the best. <laughs> and the ladder's safely tied on and secured and it's not going anywhere now. Lesson learnt. So I'm just um, cleaning up all the sand that's come in through the uh, keel box. Uh, the only reason it's come in is because we didn't put all the bolts in and get it sealed and everything perfectly. Because um, it was just a matter of get the plate down quick before they blast. Um, and then I'll take all the bolts up um, and then have a look uh, inside the keel box and then start masking off the places that I'm not painting for the welding um, and then get some paint on. Um, they've still got a bit of shot blasting to do um, but they're going to do that on Monday um, because uh, there's some new plate that we're painting just with red oxide just to stop it getting rusty. They've blasted the mill scale off so I'm going to paint this that side today and then on Monday they'll flip it over and blast the other side. Though in hindsight, we should have um, maybe put all the bolts in because there's some a lot of cleaning up to do in this t bilge. So I'm off to crawl around under the boat and do some thickness testing on the underside of the keel um, to just see what we're left with after um, we've shot blasted it. So what Melissa's doing here is using a device called an ultrasonic metal thickness tester 
uh, to measure the thickness of the steel after blasting. This is so that any repairs that we do below the waterline and indeed above the waterline can be done in accordance with the shipbuilding and repair quality standards. And this enables us to accurately identify which areas are within acceptable limits and isolate areas which are in need of more thorough repair. Working to these guidelines is especially useful as they clearly lay out the definitions of the areas of imperfection based on the ratio of the thickness and area and that gives us clear guidance uh, on those how those imperfections should be remedied so we know we're doing things properly. So this bit they are uh, coming back to blast on Monday because that's where the blocks were. And then... The orange ginger colour you can see here is the surface oxidisation the day after blasting. We've looked into dozens of different brands of rust inhibitors and have spoken with the technical department at Jotun who make the paint systems we're using. Now, Jotun have specifically told us not to use any rust inhibitors underneath their paint. They've told us to leave the steel to go ginger like this and then to paint their Jotun 87 primer directly to this ginger steel. The only downside to this Jotun paint is that it's so good it's really hard to grind it back off in the areas that you need to weld to. So I'm just masking off, uh, well, where Nigel is going to weld so there's no paint to contaminate his welds. So the intrepid duo of Melissa and Jack set about the task of trying to paint the steel outdoors in 30 miles an hour of wind. Jack did an amazing job sweeping off the dust and sand We'd asked the yard to blast all the new steel as well because it comes from the factory with what's called mill scale on the surface and for small bits we can grind that off but for larger bits like this it would take ages. As we said Nigel had asked us not to use the crazy Jotun paint where he was going to weld because it's a nightmare to get back off and it contaminates the welding. So on the new steel Melissa used a high quality red oxide which is fantastic stuff anyway and will protect the steel until we can cut out all the different shapes and panels we need to to make the new keel box. getting ready. Excuse my washing up. I'm ready to paint um, the, um, what do you call it, swing kill, lifting kill, um, and up inside the kill box. I've taped off the areas that I don't want to get paint, and it's ridiculously windy, so I'm prepared to get covered in paint. I've got my goggles, so I don't get any in my eyes, and I'm I'm ready. I've, um, I don't know if you can hear me because of the wind, I've done my best to paint around the keel box. I've still got that bit to do but they're coming back to blast some more of under the keel on Monday. So I'm just going to go inside, I like that grey. the inside of the keel box which is a bit awkward but at least it's not windy in here So 
let's just recap the exact problem that we've got with our keel box. Here's a picture of the keel box. Now, as you can see, it's got a large kind of void box space in the middle where our lifting keel goes up inside that. The bottom plates of the keel itself, the long keel, are six mil thick and the side plates are four millimeters thick. And that's fine, that's good construction. But the bottom part of each side of the keel box is badly corroded and there's some patches higher up that are as well. The ballast is lead bricks surrounded by tar with concrete on top. We don't know exactly the ratios of that, but it's about four tons and then the sole boards go on top of that. So what are we gonna to do to fix this problem? Well. Here's our keel box again, uh, with our six mil base plates and our four mil sides, that's fine. So the first step is gonna to be to blast everything back to bare steel. Then we're gonna epoxy everything, so there'll be no unpainted metal anywhere. So we're not overplating unpainted metal or rust. Then we build our new keel box on the inside of the old one. We have checked we've got tolerance and clearance for that. So that's gonna be fine. Step four, we're gonna use angle iron or a steel around the edges of absolutely everything. Uh, to give it extra strength, weld along every single corner as you can see there. So that will fully encapsulate and then before we finally close it up we'll pour our troll oil in in between the two panels. So that's me done. Uh, I think that's us done for this week. It's the end of another episode. Um, the keel box inside is painted. Uh, the base plate of the keel uh, under the keel box is plated um, at plated painted painted inside the keel box painted under the keel um box on the base plate of the keel no nope. so i have painted inside the keel box i have painted under the keel box on the base plate of the keel i have painted one side of the lifting keel all of the flat um angle iron and the two eight before sheets uh, there's still half of the underneath of the keel to do, but they, they still need to come back and do a bit more shot blasting. So I can't do that till Monday. Um, feeling a bit windswept. It's been a very blustery day and I am, my hair is full of sand, and um, but I didn't manage to get that much paint on me. So that's good. So I'd just like to end this episode by saying a massive thank you to everyone that uh, likes our videos and subscribes and watches our videos and of course our wonderful patrons and people that support us through PayPal and Amazon, um, our Amazon wish list and all the other avenues out there. You're all just absolutely amazing. So thank you so much and look forward to seeing you next week. Bye bye.